G'day guys, we are the Brucen Brothers. I'm the Clefo King. And I'm the RC Master. Together, we are the Brucen Brothers. These are our three channels guys, get on board, check them out. For those of you that don't know, this is what we're working on here today guys. We're doing a roadkill style camshaft, timing chain lifters valve spring swap on a 351 Cleveland. This engine is for a car we're building on our channel here, guys. Check it out. So, what do you reckon? Did you say camshaft swap? Yo, camshaft, Yo, camshaft swap. swap. From guys. a little one to a big one. Big one. Lopey idle. We're talking, you know, that idle that makes the soft can go flat. When you got, a, when you got an open drink. We're going to crank this baby around. up, guys. She's going to be from about 250 horsepower to about 400 when we're done with her. Double. We're going to make a whole series of videos along the way. Get on board. Thanks, Dan, for being the cameraman, helping me out. Check awesome. out his channel, guys. Phew! G'day, g'day, guys. It's a Glevo King here. If you have been following my last few series of videos, I've been doing a quick cam, lifters, timing chain, foul spring swap in this nice low kilometer Glevo here. What we're doing today, guys, we've done the timing chain, the water pump, we've reinstalled the harmonic balancer. We're at the stage now of doing the sump gasket. So this video today is how I install a Cleveland sump gasket. Make sure you smash the like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, listen, we're doing a sump gasket today on a 351. Now, I'm quite far into the job here, but there's something very important I remember that I'm going to put back at the side of the video to tell you guys. This is the, pretty much the last stage where you're sealing up the bottom end. Now I don't know, there's any number of reasons why you might have needed to have taken the sump off guys. Maybe you watch my other video and you've got a leaky rear main that you're doing, but in case you've swapped the camshaft and you've gone from a hydraulic cam to a solid cam, you'll actually, this is the stage where you want to be mindful about what kind of oil pump you're running. This one's standard volume, it's a hydraulic, it'll be perfect. If you're running a hydraulic roller cam, you want standard volume too. If you're feeding a solid cam, you want to feed a high volume oil pump straight away. Another little tip guys, quickly, this pan that we're fitting is just a normal pan, it doesn't have a baffle inside and it's just your normal 5 litre oil pan, but a lot of cars that I build, most of the engines, every engine I build, I fit a 7 litre winged front sump high energy or Aeroflow or RTS or any of the brands that are out there, Myladen, you'll have an issue when you're fitting a new pump and a new pickup that the pickup's going to interfere with the back of the baffle cut out. So my tip for that guys, you have to build a few engines to work this one out is to actually, before you even fit this, these have a lot of thread on the front of them. You can cut a few turns off of the oil pump pickup thread so that it screws more further into the oil pump, moving the pickup more forward and you'll clear the cutout. Now I've pulled some off of cars where guys didn't work that out and they've hacked the oil pan the fancy oil pan you pulled the money out for that design to have that shrouded pickup so that you've got a little box of oil like always around there and they like hack it up and that another little tip quickly when you're fitting these if no gaskets dry is you want this as level as it's going to be to in regards to where the bottom of the pan's going to sit and if you were ever putting it on obviously testing it with no gaskets no rubber so it's dry closer and you do get a bit of interference between this pickup and the bottom of the pan, which does happen sometimes, you will have to cut some notches in here. I'm not doing it on this one because it's got plenty of clearance and it'll be fine, but if I was doing like a solid cam race engine with like a Aeroflow big sump, I would put a few notches in, just little these guys, not much, just something, so that there's always oil at the pickup. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do now is slap this pan on. Now what the first thing we've done is fish our gaskets out of the kit here that are for the sump, these two long ones and the two corner ones here, we've got a microfiber rag, now I spent a long time cleaning these up the other day and they should be pretty clean, I've run a wire brush around, gotten rid of all the old gasket and I've cleaned these rails, now when you're doing this job pay particular attention to these corners, fish out all the old silicon, then I'll show you what I do, I get a yeah can of wax and grease and just a microfiber rag so it doesn't leave any dust and you come through and give it a bit of a quick spray along the rails. Wipe the rails here first. You leave that sitting on the back to penetrate into the 
Close this for a minute. Green steel, back here, wipe out the back channel. Okay, so there's a little bit of gunk in that corner there still, so I'll have to grab a pointy screwdriver here. And we'll just pick this out, you don't want nothing in here, no silicon, needs to be completely clean, so you see that. That'll give us trouble later on. Okay, so you clean these two front corners really, really well, guys. Because they're going to be what's going to engage the corners of these front gasket seals. Okay, so we'll get a bit more spray in there. Now the other, the other two in the front corner here I've cleaned out really well yesterday. They should be mint. There'll be a little bit of silicon there fresh from the timing cover so we don't have to go. There is a, have a look closely, there's a groove here along the front. You want to get into that groove and you want to get all the old silicon out. Get it as clean as you can. Takes a few minutes. You even hit it with a wire brush, whatever you need to do guys. So what I've got to do is just get this corner here cleaned out. Put a screwdriver into there like this. That's coming pretty good. An engine's been like acid dipped or whatever, you well, you won't have to worry about this, but say you're doing this under a car, guys, the one thing that's gonna let you down is not cleaning these corners out properly. If there's any oil in there, then the, the seal won't stick. And if there's any silicon in there, they're not perfectly clean. Now look in there, that, that one's ready to go. Beautiful. This one just needs. That's the ticket. Oh yeah, no, that one's good too. Oh, that's the ticket. Mint. Look at right, that. Guys, now I'm not gonna take too long. Next thing we're gonna do quickly. Clean and free of oil. Give the sump a quick spray. And what I missed before, that was the front of that timing cover. Get in, get that seal. Look. The sump. Sump it. We'll get that spray out of the back of there. Peek right through. Alright, so that drag's pretty much done for. They're only cheap, those little microfiber things, but they're great because they leave no dust behind. Alrighty, so the next step now, everything's cleaned up, is we want to come and grab our two long gaskets. You want to work out which one goes on which side. What's that one? No, this is the straight one. So this one will be over here. And uh, another little tip if you've built an engine and it's some sort of a roller cam shaft, zone feeder high volume pump, you're going to want to change that to a standard volume pump so that you don't have too much pressure on the cam because they're designed to rev much higher than a normal one. So what I've done guys, I laid the gasket out on the pan there and I've picked it up, flipped it 180. If you've watched my tip uh, the other day, I showed how when I cut one of these open, you can flip the lid around and put it in. So this has been over 24 hours now guys, and it's ready to go still. So that's a cool little thing. I'll just wipe that nib clean. Alrighty, I'll just wipe like a nice neat bead here on this gasket. I like to squeeze the tube from the back of the tube forward so you don't end up halfway through a line running out of pressure or something. You know, I like to roll the tube up. Okay, so this one's ready to go. Spin it over gently. Be careful not to drop it. I actually don't really like these cork gaskets there's a Felpro do like a heavier duty version of these which I've got inside I should go and get one out to show you guys the part number they're really good they're like a rubber reinforced gasket 
but because we've brought the set like Felpro gasket kit to do this job here we're just going to use these that came in the kit now little tips because they're always a bit bent and they're out of shape as I come to my bolts that I've cleaned up and I'll get the two big corner bolts eight little guys one two three four five six seven eight and you actually just uh, finger nuts the screw in, clean them up of course so there's no oil on the thread, you don't want to contaminate this new gasket and you just put them in your centre of the gasket so that it holds it in place like a little post and we'll just put all of the little guys in here there are actually kits available to stud to feed studs on the sump, they're quite cool. I like to use them if the customers are happy to run with them. They're awesome. Unfortunately, they do not make a one-piece sump gasket for a Cleveland, but when I do a winter, some work on a mate's winter in a couple of weeks, helping him hot it up. Hopefully I'll uh, get to make a video showing you guys how to use a one-piece sump gasket on a winter. They're an awesome little bit of kit. And if you end up with one of these style ones, Windsor Cleveland, they're pretty much the same. And the reason you put these in is, see how much I had to actually bend that to get that lined up there? You don't really want to, um, you don't want the gasket to be touching one side or the other. Wiggle it around and get it halfway on the bolt. You want this to be pretty straight at that front edge there. Okay, so we'll tuck it down everywhere where it's loose. Check it. Check it, check it. Okay, now we're not gonna take too long those bolts, so just holding it lined up just for a second. We'll get this other gasket off quickly. Spin it, run a V. I'll just wipe that deep. Pro tip guys to um always keep your tubes rolled up from the bottom. It just makes it so much easier. I'm going with the silicon line on the inside of the oil pan guys just so it's a bit neater like it will squirm out everywhere but you don't want it to be like real messy on the outside of the block if you can avoid it okay right from the corner to the corner now that's something I probably just didn't mention before when you do this, this part of the gasket you want to get it right from the very tip of that line to the very tip of that line on the bottom like so Right, so we'll spin that around gently, try not to make too much of a mess. A lot of the times that's easier said than done. Alrighty, so that's on. Pretty much lined up for the time being. We'll put a big bolt here. There's a fair bit of silicon there that's probably going to get in the way later. Now my tip if you're doing this under the car guys is to use a quarter inch socket set with two long extensions that are longer than that deep part of the pan. And uh, you'll have the most clearance to get in between the engine mount and things like that. That's the setup, guys. All you need is quarter inch. Sure These you gaskets here only need to be done up to like 10 to 15 foot pounds, which is really bugger rule. So you want to, um, okay, straighten that out, line that tip up. They're only cork, guys, and obviously that's only like pretty thin. So you can easily distort the pen rail if you go talking too hard and you can easily um, compromise the seal. Easy does it with the um, sump gasket torque. Okay, so we've centered those out. Okay, so the next step now goes, it's not really staying down. Yeah, I hate how they put those in the box. Give you no end of shit under the car. You can use aviation sealants or something if you really want to, but it'll be a nightmare to clean off when it dries like, it really dries like nails goes. 
Okay, so the next deep that I'd like to do is come in now to the corners with the silicon guys and I just put a little bit of a blob in here and on the corners there and there and over on this one, that corner just a little bit in there bit in that corner there Ooh, just wanted to touch to that yep, right over here same thing, that at this corner here because the seal doesn't go all the way through quite a big blob to seal that edge up just a little bit here this one here just a little bit on the edge a bit blob in there now if you want to come around here you might be able to see that the the seal in here isn't cut completely flush to the block and it's got a rounded corner so you just want to put a slightly bigger blob in the front here right right sort of there like that okay that down. We'll grab our seal now the way the seal goes in is these two bits press into those bits that we cleaned out before and there's a little channel here that the center of the cork actually goes in so you put the cork on first and then these come in like this now the way i like to do them is i get them lined up on both corners and i try and press them down at the same time sometimes you've got to give it a little pinch just to get it into the channel like that you side in yep and you just press it down and you want it you want it not sitting above the cork and not under it so you want to get that right in like that like that there we go guys that one's that one's in You want to pay special attention, you do not want any overlap, that's perfect. If you're doing this under the car, these will probably be dropping out and they'll give you all kinds of trouble. It pays to do it on a stand, but if you're um, careful, what you can do is you can put a little blob of um, silicon, not silicon, a little tiny dot of like glue or super glue to glue this in here if it's perfectly clean. Some guys like to put a full bead of silicon over here, I don't. I like to put my bead of silicon on the other side that sticks to the pan in the end so that when you take the pan off that these stick to the pan and come out without like well, messing the, everything the block's up. always the truer surface it'll have the better seal and the pan will always have the imperfections so where so people mess up that makes perfect they sense. start one corner and they try and roll them in and then they end up like stretching them so i, I actually i don't know if he's noticed that i pinch it and i get it started but you don't go on the one side straight away get over here and i get the other one in to the groove too and you want to work them both down at the same sort of a time paying attention okay guys see how the cork has tucked in perfect if you do it the wrong way now i have seen it guys it might sound stupid but the reason i'm doing videos like this is to help guys they put the cork on top and then it doesn't seal and there's a big hole under there and not a hole under there Look, some guys like to put a big bead of silicon under there. I'm not going to because it's got those two lips that you might have seen when you put the sump on here. That's going to squash so much it'll seal really good. The reason I put a slight bead on here is because this little bead weld here that's meant to squash into here to make its own channel sometimes can actually, if it's dry, it can push the gasket out of the way or munch it. But if you just put a little bit of silicon on there and it's wet, on this surface it'll just help it go on so what we're going to do now try and make this a short one guys i'm just ripping and slap this thing back on okay guys while well, this is wet because they're so bent and they're actually not staying in place but we've lined up the holes we're going to quickly whip all of the nuts out and if you have a look what i was doing wiggling them forward and back is centralizing the holes in the gasket to the holes in the pan even though they're somewhat out, out of the box. And the other thing is you want to just look in here and you want to make sure there's a nice solid bead. Full contact from the corner to the front. So that corner there needs a little bit more, guys. This corner's good. That one needs a little bit more. So I'll have to quickly touch those up. Just a little bit. What I'll do. And then, yeah, guys, you just want here. That's it. Yeah, just that. So when the pan hits it, it's solid. That one. Over here, guys. 
I'm pretty sure I had this front corner here pretty nailed, but I'll just put a little dollop on there. Now the other little thing I like to do is because there is a slight discrepancy from here to here, I'll just put a tiniest little bit there. That one I got already. I'll get that bolt out before I do that one. Actually, I can just put a touch there. There you go, that's fine. Anywhere where two gaskets are going to meet on corners, just in case there's some bit of a step, bit of a ledge, you just want to get a tiny little bit of silicon on there. Now, I'll put this lid back on here. This will be good until we come to do the intake later on. For that guys, that knob I got off. I love that. That is an awesome little tip. It's just okay, annoying now, having to empty that else, tube out if it dries off in the nib. Something else I didn't do was put, put a little bead along the back of these um, rubbers gently. This one's just got to be very, very thin. Just a tiny yes, little bead. Whoop. Just like that. This bead is not actually to seal or anything, guys. This is a lubrication so that the pan, when you're doing it up, doesn't squash this thing out of the end. You'd be surprised guys, all kinds of things can go wrong with gaskets. Gaskets are cheap, they're mass produced a few times when I was young and putting some of my first few builds together. I had an issue with the bloody fitting these guys. This is a little tip. I a set of UV extractors <laughs> and fitting these guys, then they blow out. See how they're, they're punched and they're wrinkled? These will only ever be done up and sealed with the manifold, that's why it says manifold on it. Took me a little while to learn that you need proper header gaskets. Just a little something. So you'll always learn a tip watching the videos. Now, be careful guys. We're about to bolt this back on. Make sure it's clean. Everything's there and it's all lined up. Now we want to place this on without disturbing anything. So, put a good handle on the pan. And come in, come in, come down. That's pretty much perfect. Wow. Have a bit of a look at that. It's lined up very nice. So we're all going down four big nuts. One, two, three. Just going to start these ones in. Now the corner ones are half inch head guys. The other ones are all 716. You just want to be careful, start them by finger. Not too far guys, just a little bit so that you've got a bit of wiggle room still. If you've got a pan brand new, sometimes the pans are actually uh, every now and then on these two bolts here. You don't want to, but you might have to. Just drill the holes a touch bigger if they're mass produced chrome or cheap like version of these it's reproduction the pan rails are just out a bit and you'll do more harm than good trying to squash it in because you will move the level plane where the gasket goes out and you'll never get a good seal so the best thing to do with that is to lightly elongate these two holes just to get the sump in a tappy medium that's enough of little tip you've got to put a fair few engines together to know that one too alrighty sleep over here It's really weird these days, guys. A lot of things you get out of the box don't don't just work. You've got to have a look. You've got to know how to problem solve, how to install things. Best way, best approach. Alrighty, so I've got these started. Now the 
the thing with these is they just only need to be done up very light at first because you just want to get it all level all the way around the pan so like like less less than finger pressure now if you're under a car and you've got your engine mounts in and things like that you can do a sump under a car the trick is to undo these pin bolts and to put a big block of wood between here and if you're running a high volume sump you drop it to where it hits the cross member you'll have to undo the front sway bar and all of that of course but you can actually get into the engine with a 916 ring spanner you can undo the oil pump drop the oil pump into the pan and uh, get it out get it out of the car where it won't come out There you go, the thing with this is just be patient, do it nice and level. You don't want to go too far on one side because those rubbers are new and they're quite high. Now the bit of silicon there is just so that they don't squash out of place when, when this line hits it, in case it wasn't exactly centered. And well I've got them down just finger tight, so I've got the half inch on now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the first pressure, pressure crisscross to about, I don't know, maybe five foot pounds on the corners like this just to pull the corners in on the rubber first and because they're a slightly bigger head let's see it goes five probably not even five just a lighter snip ever then we'll come back and we'll give these ones a light nip you don't really need to crisscross but I'm going to just do it here so that we end up uh, walking it at the same time down nice and level Okay, so they're all just snipped to five foot pounds or so. So now what we want to do is just have a bit of a look at it. Make sure if you start to see the cork slipping out of the sides, stop and have a bit of a look. Something might be wrong. Sometimes a bit too much chili can make it start to move out of place. This looks really nice. See, it's level to the gasket on both sides. So we're almost ready to go. So now we'll swap back over and now we're going to do the we're going to do three series this year. Look, I'm not going to show it all. I'm just going to go now to 10 foot pounds or so, which is not much with the quarter inch. Then we're going to go back through the 716s, match them up. Then for the last one, we're going to tighten the 716s out to the four corners, and that'll be 15, and the job's done. Thanks, guys. That's how you do a sump. Cleave Oaking, make sure you smash the like and subscribe. There's a few tips in there. Make sure you listen closely. Follow follow along guys and if you've got any tips feel free to drop them in the comments make sure you smash like and subscribe you all right guys cleave king you another video done and dusted out of the way got the sump on talked up guys 15 foot pounds take your time don't squash it too much just nice and even like that beautiful